Hey, I'm Lauren. Hey, I'm Ashley, and welcome to the last episode of True Events, where we discuss non-fictional movies and series. Grab some popcorn and relax as we dive into this week's episode of the 2017 film, First They Killed My Father, directed by Angelina Jolie. So this film takes place in 1975 following a five-year-old Cambodian girl named Long Ung and her family. This is taking place during the time of the Khmer Rouge and basically it's like this communist party who's taking over Cambodia and the dictator of this like like revolution is um his name is Pol Pot so yeah he's pretty mean (laughs) so Pol Pot was a Cambodian citizen who wanted to turn Cambodia into a better place an interesting fact today today may 19th is his birthday but he died in 1998 boo how sad but um yeah so during this time all the cambodian citizens were forced out of their homes because the u.s was going to bomb that part um this was due to the vietnam war going on during that time and it um this event is taking place when richard nixon was the u.s president at this time so a lot is going on yeah to be completely honest with you i don't remember much about the history that we learned Mm -hmm. um but i thought that the vietnam war was between the united states and vietnam i didn't really i don't remember like listening about cambodia yeah i don't remember hearing anything about this happening yeah to hear about it now Once the Cambodians were forced out of their homes, they were stripped away from their valuables, belongings, and professions. In fact, they had to walk a lot, like they were being forced out of their cities. And as they were all walking together, there was the realization that there aren't any poor people and there aren't any rich people. They're all equal and there are no classes. There's no high class, middle class, low class. They're all just like equal, but equally poor. Yeah, it's like a big change for everyone too. Uh, and very sad yeah it's just like you're just everyone's like being evacuated out of their house their homes and where they live at and take taking everyone to like this like i don't know new place where they never been before yeah it's also very sad like the doctors teachers soldiers like they were all stripped away from the person their um yeah. profession it, yeah i feel like the ones that got treated the worst because they were kind of like those are the people they were kind of after i guess like the people who kind of you know were like i guess they're like uh, like the upper class ish they were like kind of aiming towards like more them mm-hmm. and trying to like um like belittle them and make them feel like guilty for like i don't know having the profession they do which they shouldn't be yeah it's just very sad like the years that it takes to become a doctor Mm -hmm. and then just to be like completely stripped away from it was very sad Uh, and um during this time uh the dictator pol pot the one who's like you know making all of this happen he makes the Cambodians become field and labor workers. So like everyone has to just like become like this, they have to, they're getting introduced to like this new life. Like now they're just, you know, a labor worker and it's just like a really big like, shift change yeah yeah change it's really sad because regardless of what age you are i mean obviously a three-year-old isn't going to be forced into a labor worker mm-hmm. but you know in a couple years they like, will. Years, yeah they will yeah because long she was only five and she was already yeah she was already five and she was already like working in the field mm-hmm. planting but mm-hmm. oh, they were placed in a labor camp and they had to line up for lunch and i remember this one scene when it was like a rainy day they gave them soup i think and it literally looked, just looked like water with rice but it was so like yeah. the portion was so little mm-hmm. like, it was like, you could literally just take it all that in like one swallow i don't know <laughs> yeah. 
looked like dog food. Yeah. Or like bird food wet. Yeah. That was the thing. I know. Because I feel like Long was kind of like, she was like, she wasn't like, like their family wasn't like wealthy, wealthy, but they were doing pretty good. Like, you know, because her dad was like a, a captain. Yeah, he was a captain. So like they had a nice house and stuff and they had like, you know, I think they had like a music player and the house was pretty nice. And then like to just go to like having like nothing, just like the clothes on their back. Yeah. It'll be really hard for them to, you know. It was very sad to see that happen again. If you know what I mean, we'll get back to that. Yeah. Um, um, so Long was working in the field crops, planting and like gathering vegetables, along with her sister Cho. Um, during this time at the labor camps, that's like kind of their main job. There is just like the work and tend to like the plants and you know pick the plants and just stuff like that. And like yeah. I don't think five year old like she's five and then like I think her sister's ten I believe or maybe she's nine I don't know. And like that's kids like kids that age should be running around not being like forced to these like long hours of labor. I know. Long's two older brothers and her oldest sister were actually sent away to work somewhere else. And her mother actually told them to not talk back and to do whatever, like, the soldiers asked them to. A couple days later, like, once, like, her older siblings are sent to, like, these different, I guess, labor camps, um, her oldest sister becomes ill and she ends up dying. I you know, that part was so sad. I was like, dang. I know. Like, when they showed her, she looked so ill. She looked like, I thought she was, like, bruised or something. Like, they badly beat it up, but I don't think it was. Yeah, and then, um... Which didn't help was that all labor, all the labor workers were being fed like in small portions of food. So like they're not getting the uh, right nutrients for all these like hours they're working for. So they're like malnourished and stuff. And it's to the point where Chow uh, tried to eat some green beans, but got yelled at and beaten by a comrade. Dang, can you imagine that? Like trying to survive. You're just like, I know it's like the littlest amount too. Like they have enough. They could spare a few green beans. And it's they're also children. Like yeah, like they have no like empathy, you know? Yeah, Yeah. but also they need the most nutrition because like they need to grow. They're growing. That is so true. Um, and then Long, who stole, she ended up stealing some rice that um her family was saving up because she was just starving. And and even at one point, Long and her family began to like cook and eat some beetles. They were like devouring it. That's how hungry they were. They were just like, mm, "This is so good. It tastes just like." chicken or i don't know i know i mean i guess it gave them some protein i i, I yeah. do think it gave them some protein so it yeah kind of they, good the way they were eating it but i don't think it's that good <laughs> yeah because they were like cooking it and it looked nice and crunchy and i was like oh that kind of looks good but i don't think i'd eat it i don't think i could eat that have you ever tried um grasshoppers you know like that uh, I, you know I, how like our culture they cook the grasshoppers and they put them in little baggies with chile yeah yeah have you ever yeah. tried that nope have you me either no oh. i can't i don't no, know why I think, I, just... I think the texture would i wouldn't like it i like oh no i could feel the legs and stuff i know i feel like if i put it in my mouth it's gonna come alive <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Who knows? It's just pretending yeah. like it's dead. Well yeah, when I when I saw that I was like, Oh, I, I don't know. I can't even like touch a gra- a dead grasshopper that, you know, some Latinos eat. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine doing that, but um Long's father, Seng, was captured by the comrades and he was actually taken away from the family. No, like that was because they already they already lost the two brothers, right? So they took them away and then the sister's dead now. And then now the father's getting taken away and it's just like, oh, uh, they're like, you know, losing their family members like one by one. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and also Long and her father, um, Seng, they had such a beautiful relationship like it broke my heart i was like people are like like blessed to have their father in their life yeah and that's what happens to them like i'm sad it's not crying no it's not fair at all yeah but um so once the father was was taken away um long's mother her name is a uh, she gave pictures to each of the children, to Lang, Chow, and Kim. Um, 
which is her older brother. So she each gave them like, um, like it's like a family photo of mm -hmm. all of them, each one of them. So Kim was sent off to the south and Chao was sent to the north and Long was sent to the east. They had to be separated just in case like one of them got captured, the other ones had a better chance of surviving. And the mother actually told them to say that they were orphans and give um, other people like different, like not give them their actual names, like say different names. That way they couldn't, they couldn't find them if like they were ever to look after them. Yeah. To like capture them. Mm -hmm. um however after a, a couple days after i believe um when they were able to escape mm -hmm. a the mother and their little sister geek they were both captured and killed due to sang being a government official and keeping it a secret uh, a little, um, so <laughs> yeah it is very sad but a little like um, information is mm -hmm. that the Kim, the Tamara Rouge um, they were capturing like soldiers of Cambodia or people that were working for the government mm -hmm. um, and they were like pushing them off to the side I don't know nobody it doesn't really show what happens to the to those people it just shows that they were like pushed to the side and were taken away yeah it's like they wanted them to like it's kind of like they were like the ones they were like targeted more mm -hmm. for because they wanted like I don't know they I feel like they just wanted to belittle them and just like torture them just for being like these I don't know like having these like you know kind of professions I guess you could say. yeah and they were pulled from their families I feel like that's why Seng he ended up lying mm -hmm. and he burnt his little um identification book that showed that he was working for the government he was a, a captain yeah. of like the military basically and he maintained that a secret and his whole family maintained it a secret because if the comrades found out that he was lying mm -hmm. which they eventually did they ended up killing those who lied so as kim walks to the south chow and long begin to walk together and end up walking into some comrades through the forest and this is when long sees her father tied up to a tree but she has to remain focused on her mission that her mother gave her because she doesn't want to you know cause any trouble and end up getting just in a bad situation i thought she was gonna run up to him yeah honestly i didn't even know that it was a father i just thought it was some guy they tied up and were like torturing but like yeah that's just crazy like i yeah i would want to just run up to him and be like you know what the heck father yeah but i feel like she knew like even if she like were, were, were to run up to him not only would he be killed but she would also and her sister yep that's exactly what have happened if she did that mm -hmm. the dictator popa and his soldiers would torture people that when they would interrogate them in order to get the answers that they wanted and yeah our theory is that the reason why Seng was tied up to a tree was because they were torturing him to get him saying that he was an actual soldier before they killed him oh, you. they wanted him to like you know confess that he right. was you know yeah yeah, they wanted him to confess that he was uh he was working for the military for the government and mm -hmm. so they could kill him like I don't know like kind of it was I don't know. This whole thing was very very sad. Yeah, it was really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, Chow and Long run into a child labor camp where they claim that they are orphans and they were put straight into work. So Chow worked in the kitchen and Long Long worked in the field planning plants and such um when yeah. i saw them like run into the camp mm -hmm. i dude, i was like no <laughs> i thought they were supposed to run like free <laughs> like yeah i was like no go the other way go around it or something but i feel like they probably would have gotten caught i know because the soldier led them to it too yeah the soldier where where she saw her father the soldier was like who are you she's like we're orphans and he's like oh there's a child labor camp over there just keep walking straight yeah it was good it was so yeah, sad that part was sad i was like dang they left the labor camp just to go to another like child labor camp yeah 
And in this labor camp, the children were being educated under the Kamra Rouge ideals and beliefs. And this routine of them of child of child working in the kitchen and long working in the plant fields, um, and also being educated continuously every day, like I guess like school basically, it became a routine until Long was placed into another camp due to her intelligence and her quick learning. Um, so in this camp, she learns how to be become a Khmer Rouge child soldier. She's only seven, keep in mind. I think she's seven at this time. Yeah, at this time she's seven. Yeah, and she learns how to assemble and use a gun properly. She also has to learn how to plant bombs and activate the bomb in the fields in case uh, the Cambodian enemies would be after them. So she's like only seven learning how to do like military stuff, basically. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so crazy because she's only seven. Yeah. How you said it. Her sister's 10 at this time. Chow is 10. Mm-hmm. And oh, Cho is 10. And I don't know. It was just so insane. Like, it, it was very heartbreaking to see how like they were separated. Yeah. And then I don't, they just, I don't know what went through their head. Also, I don't know if you like if you paid attention to this part, but um, I'm not saying that you don't pay attention. But uh, there's this one part where like they were singing, the soldiers were singing with like the oh, yeah. guns, mm-hmm. and Long, what she ended up doing was that she was kind of like paying attention to the music and to what they were doing, but instead of seeing soldiers, she, she saw like Cambodian dancers, I believe. Um, and like doing a traditional dance like it was it was really beautiful to like do that contradiction in a way also for a child because a child's so innocent and i think that's what that film showed in that moment yeah no i remember when they were dancing but i didn't realize she she was just like seeing dancers i thought she was just seeing them dancing no she was seeing them but like her like she was like you know like how you days off sometimes and you yeah. start thinking about everything and anything that's basically what her brain was doing like her innocent mind yeah because she is a child you have to think about that like yeah i mean, she's really young but i feel like she's also very smart like she's very intelligent for her age yeah definitely before all this happened i feel like she was already kind of like the smart girl and then her like having to go through this like yeah she becomes a little she becomes more intelligent she you know, it, like she has to really, like gut feeling. She has to be really smart about the choices she makes, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the United States and the Vietnamese they sneaked into the area where the labor camps were located in Cambodia. All the children ran, and they were trying to flee from the area. And while all of this was happening, Long ends up running back to the labor camp where her sister and herself were placed in before she like was transferred, I guess you could say. She was, tra- she was trying to find Cho while crying out her name as she was terrified of what was happening. And also like the idea of her sister being dead was another thing that was scaring her. Yeah, that was a really sad scene to watch because she- the kids were just like in her, her camp. The kids were just like going to sleep or getting, it was like nighttime. And then the bombs just start coming in and like explosives everywhere. And then the like uh, comrade, the older people, like uh, the adults are telling everyone to like evacuate, run, run. And she runs to the other, the, the camp that's just like right next to it, I guess, right over. And she's trying to look for her sister and she's like crying out her name and stuff. And she's just like and then it, she sees it all on fire which mm-hmm. about, i'm assuming she just like thinks she's dead which is you know just probably very difficult for her and i honestly thought that scene was very powerful like the yeah. little child just crying sobbing being scared in the middle of like a fire like the fire surrounding her i thought it was like also it was like- sad but it was also kind of like beautiful in a way i don't know yeah. why um, also i'm gonna say the little girl who plays long she did a really good job at acting like she really she just like conveyed all the emotions necessary like she was just feel it like you could feel her like pain and she just the thing, did a good job yeah she did she did an amazing job but the thing is that she didn't even have a lot of like dialogue she didn't have a lot of lines mm-hmm. so she had to really rely on like her emotions and her and that's a lot harder 
that's yeah. a that is a lot harder like showing like acting through her eyes basically that's a lot harder than acting by words yeah in a way because you need to like really show like really give that feeling to the audience mm-hmm. but in silence yeah as long as walking away from the labor camp um with a group of children all of them are just trying to find a safe spot uh she ends up reuniting with her brother kim and her sister chow i was so happy at that part i was like yeah it's like you know you know i was like tearing up at that part because <laughs> it went from like a really very sad scene to like a bitter not a bittersweet but like a sweet scene yeah it was just like going through so much and then you know by yourself and then once you see you know your family member or someone you know you, you feel like i would assume you would feel a little at ease mm-hmm. but once they find a safe place to rest they become friends with other children and kim before they like find this place they went to another labor really quickly like another labor camp and they found like live chickens and kim got was able to catch one and kill it i don't know i find it funny because it looked like they're children you know i don't know so they ended up like they killed it and then they started eating it and sharing it with like the kids that they became friends with however they also find a snake and what surprises me is that the youngest one who is long she beheads this and skins the snake ew so she begins to cook the meat and a little boy found a little boy found out that the snake had eggs and he began to eat them yeah i mean i feel like they weren't really picky with what they ate because Mm -hmm. they didn't have much to choose from so Mm -hmm. yeah also some cultures like eat snakes yeah oh like have you ever tried snake (laughs) um no Mm-hmm. Like uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's for me. No, um, I tried snake before. Oh really? But not like not like chewing. It was like um, so in Mexico they like also sell some snakes, I guess you could say. And um, one of my aunts she brought some powder because fun fact, weird fun weird fact is that snake powder, I guess you could say. Like they just burn it and and, and they get basically it's powder that comes out when it's burned. I I don't know how to. Okay. explain it well but yeah like so basically ashes? you get that uh-huh like the, oh. ashes the, the ashes of the snake i don't know if it's the ashes like oh, they just like it's like the snake but in powder like oh, okay. <laughs> like they grind it i think oh i guess you, i guess you so yeah so like they take the snake that is now in powder form and mm-hmm. you could like sprinkle it on food fun here's the thing i didn't know i was consuming snake until i found out that my mom was sprinkling um, powder snake onto the soups and foods that we were all eating. Oh my god. Uh, the thing is that it helps with so many things. It helps with like, I think it helps like with your blood, it helps with diabetes, it helps with acne, which is something that I was, I deal with a lot. So during that time, my skin was clearing and I didn't even know why. Like it did taste a little like spicy, but we, we just ate it like nothing. Wow, I kind of want some now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't taste like anything, but during the scene where she, like, skins it, mm-hmm. oh my god, I was about to puke. Yeah, it was graphic. It was very graphic. I didn't... Well, I mean, it even says that it's going to be, like, a gore movie, but still, that was... Yeah, I was like, well, I was not ready for that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, the Vietnamese find them and begin firing at the Cambodian soldiers. And all the people who were resting in that area are now running away while also looking for cover. That like was they so can't sad. catch a break. They can catch a break. That's so sad. I'm like, bro. And it's like it's not even their fault, but yeah. you know, what did I don't know. They like had bad aiming because they start running away and then like they hide behind like this little hill. Mm-hmm. And then two boys that they became friends with start trying to run towards the forest and one gets shot in the head. I a know, little that, part, that part was sad. I was in like probably really traumatizing for her to see like what the heck. Yeah, and the thing is that they had to move. Like they couldn't stay yeah. there. So they were like trying to like time <laughs> the fire shots. I don't the shots. I don't know. Yeah, no. She's like trying to like see when it's a good time to leave while also processing 
witnessing that little boy get shot in the head and yeah. also thinking about her brothers and sister trying to just find safety. It's like yeah. Fun. But eventually they do end up running out of there and they end up running towards the forest where they eventually get separated once again. Um, Long gets stuck in the section where she and other children planted the bombs. And this is like when she freezes and she starts to like, she sees others trying to get out of that section, but they don't know what's planted underneath there. So as they're running, the bombs are getting activated and they're getting killed in the process of trying to escape. I know. That's um, just, good. I was going to say, I know that's pro- it's like a never ending like cycle over there just like finding safety then getting bombed evacuate you're like you're always like on your toes you're always like on eggshells because you don't know when something's gonna happen Mm. yeah no it's very very sad and this is the moment when she realizes where she's at and what she has to do and she eventually starts walking very carefully trying to avoid and remember where she placed all the traps so instead of like walking in a straight line she's like Mm. taking slow steps and it's kind of like in a um I don't know, like in a curved type of line. Yeah. In a zigzag line. Yeah. She's like not trying to like um what's activate called? anything. Yeah, she's not trying to activate. Yeah. Um, so when she gets out safely, she reunites with Kim and Chow. And shortly after returning with them, the three of them are reunited with their older brothers who survived this chaos. Yeah, I started crying when I saw that. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh thank God. Like she gets some like, you know, something good out of it. Or not good, but like, you know yeah she like some of her family members yeah it's it's half i guess you could say yeah. but it's still like just to see that they all made it out alive it's very like you know yeah at the end of the film it shows them all grown up probably like 30s maybe yeah these 40s and it shows them being blessed by some monks who during the whole film they are being treated wrongly by soldiers due to their different beliefs yeah that was really sad it was like they were also working in fields and the Khmer Rouge soldiers they were yelling at them they were like oh like I I don't know it's calling like really like rude things yeah they're just calling them like stupid and like i don't know i think they were calling them cows or something yeah i think they they said like they were spitting on them or something like that like they were dirt i don't remember but i don't know it was like something along those lines or uh it was just really really sad to see like just because they have different beliefs yeah overall how did you feel about the film lauren um honestly it was really sad uh, some parts are sad well the whole situation the whole situation is kind of sad mm-hmm. um but i feel like she was a really tough girl and she was like strong and she managed to really use that to her to her advantage in this and you know able to like survive i guess through it yeah. all um and i thought the girl who played um long did a really good job definitely like, yeah she did really good um i think the acting was great and just everything um yeah and mm-hmm. then the real person who it's based on long the real long um i feel i'm like oh my god i feel like i i feel like wow she's just a strong person to have to go through that and like come out of it like a lot like nothing ever happened yeah well i'm i'm sure like she probably had you needed some time to like deal with that what that happened and you know like really um soak it in yeah like so process it but for her being so young and like to go through all those things and like i feel like she still was like um she was just like uh i don't know like she just had like a lot of like strength and i feel like faith i don't know Mm -hmm. she just like was like a strong little girl yeah well yeah I did like the film overall, though. Um, yeah. What about you? Um, just like you, I did really enjoy the film. I feel like it gave what it was supposed to give and all the different emotions because it is, like, um something that gives you, like, a yeah. series of emotions. It takes you on a roller coaster, you know? Yeah, it honestly does. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's, like, what makes films interesting rather than it just being, like, the same type of feeling. Just like the same thing over and over again. I want to. Mm-hmm. I want to feel something. <laughs> I know. Um, like we were happy, we were sad, we were angry, we yeah. were sick to our stomachs at one point because of the snake. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like different emotions is always good to feel. Yeah, and I also did like I like how like they recreated the scenes 
and mm-hmm. yeah and was, yeah they did a pretty good job at like getting the, the like uh labor camps down i feel like i know yeah it, it honestly is. looks like a vacation house like one of those houses like in Bora yeah. Bora. <laughs> yeah i know you're talking about yeah where it's like on the water yeah like yeah. the outside yeah it's just two different um situations like once where you're relaxing you're happy and the other ones where you're working yeah not even to be paid i think angelina jolie did a really good job at like you know making directing. It, yeah directing it and like getting yeah. everything it was yeah, good. Was, yeah it was uh i don't know i also how you said i also liked how like the little girl oh my god she was amazing in this whole movie yeah, she like was. she had no dialogue like that's yeah. what's like my head like i'm just amused i'm mm-hmm. amused for the age that she has and not acting with like lines she was acting with her eyes her eyes told the story for her yeah i don't know i i heard that that acting method is so hard so that's why like i'm so amused and like amazed yeah. i'm i don't know i feel impacted by her acting <laughs> <laughs> yes, for reals. Like all these other actors have to step up the game. <laughs> yeah, for real. Cause she's like really young. Yeah, she's gonna get up to them and she's gonna beat them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. She's gonna win a few Oscars. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I know there's a connection that we both made, but I want to ask you first. What connection did you make while watching this film? Um, probably like to the previous movies we reviewed like the pianist and then the one i think we just did right before this right which was my best friend and frank because they're like um the those two are about the holocaust and like being in concentration camps um and like that's kind of similar to her situation now because she she's just in a, a labor camp but it's like still like they're holding them like kind of hostage and treating them bad and they living in these bad conditions and taken away from their houses yeah stripping away from their identities exactly yeah so, it's literally the same thing yeah that's the connection i made but um, yeah. what about you the connection that i made after learning who whole pot was mm. was that i mean they even a lot of people even um compare him to hitler oh yeah they put him up there with hitler too yeah because what he did he wanted to make cambodia great again but he ended up like killing his own people like that's the a oh, little no. different than hitler hitler started attacking a whole different race that was in his country and in his like continent but um pol pot he was going against his own people if they had like a different belief or a different idea or like anything that like contradicted pol pot they mm-hmm. would have been like killed yeah he wouldn't he wouldn't show mercy exactly no he didn't i was like i think this way and you have to think the way that i think yeah very much brain brainwashing them yeah and i feel like that's what they were doing during the education the education Mm -hmm. the little like schooling that they had for like long in the labor camps when she was in the child labor camp Mm -hmm. i feel like they were brainwashing them into like oh you have to think this way and this way only yeah no they were it's very sad though like we we were even talking about it in um episode one with the pianist about the pianist and episode eight about my best friend and frank um Mm -hmm. we were talking about it we were hoping that it never happened ever again little did we know that it did happen a couple years after in the 70s i know like two decades after yeah it's really unfortunate and heartbreaking yeah I wonder now, like, what other country did this to their own people or to, like... I know, I feel like I'm just, like, I didn't know this happened. And then I'm pretty sure it happened other places, too. It's yeah. just happened all over. I mean, yeah. Honestly, it did, because it, it did happen here, too, no? Uh, Technically, yeah. slavery. Oh, yeah. And then also, like, the Europeans pushed out the natives and they pushed them into, like, the reservations. Yeah, the Europeans took over. Yeah. Natives land. Yeah, so it's like... It happened everywhere. And also in um, The Pianist and My Best Friend and Frank, in the film My Best Friend and Frank, they were they were even saying, and I quote, they don't want us, but they don't want us to leave. I know, right? And that's what they're doing. It's like, we don't want you, or like they treat you wrongly, yet, no, you're going to stay because I want to continue to treat you wrongly. It doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make sense. 
it's so sad to see like how people with power think they should be treating others mm. or how they end up treating others just because they hold like, no power <laughs> yeah, they let the power get to them yeah okay. or it's like they always planned for this but they're just like um taking advantage of mm-hmm. their power exactly. know, it's just like at this point i feel like they don't think they're humans anymore i feel like they think they're they're a whole different they, species they definitely think they're superior to other people mm-hmm. it's so sad that's it for today's last episode of the 2017 film first they killed my father thank you so much for joining us in this podcast journey we hope you enjoyed listening to all of our episodes that were based on true events thank you lauren for i i want to thank you really quickly for just like this fun experience that we both had and making this fun for me and also i hope everything goes well for you and also i just hope you accomplish so many things in your future and i hope your dreams come true of your career thank you that was so heartfelt um yes um thank you ashley for being another host with me on this podcast it was really fun and i got to see like I get to watch new movies, like interesting movies that I've never seen before. And it was really cool, you know, getting to review it with you and talk about it. So I really enjoyed that. And I wish you the best. Nothing but the best. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it for today. And that's it for our podcast. Woo-hoo. Woo, we finished. <laughs> I'm kidding. Bye. Bye.